Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 27th of November. Police in Indian capital allows entry to protesting farmers after clashes but with conditions. EU urges a One Peace Council to include diverse membership. And Nepal fundamental to India's neighborhood first policy, says Foreign Secretary Shringla. And now for all the details. Thousands of Indian farmers scuffled with police on Friday as they tried to march to national capital, New Delhi, in protest against new farm laws liberalizing procurement that they say will leave them vulnerable to big companies. Following clashes, the Delhi police later in the day allowed entry to the agitating farmers but on conditions that they protest peacefully and maintain order. Thousands of Indian farmers agitating against new farm laws entered Indian capital New Delhi from neighboring states of Haryana and Punjab after they were allowed permission by Delhi police following clashes, but with conditions to protest peacefully and maintain order. The farmers in India's northern farm belt have been protesting new laws enacted in September, which liberalize agricultural trade, but they believe they will leave them vulnerable to big companies and they fear government will eventually withdraw minimum support price for wheat and rice. The government has however said there is no plan to eliminate the wholesale markets. Earlier in the day, police resorted to firing tear gas at some places on the outskirts of Delhi and used water cannons at entry points as clashes broke out with farmers who were being denied entry since Thursday. Farmers make up a powerful voting bloc across India and some leaders urged Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government not to crush the protests with an iron hand. In news from Pakistan. Pakistan on Friday saw over 3,000 coronavirus cases for the third consecutive day, taking the nationwide tally to 389,311. As the coronavirus second wave spreads deeper into community, the number of critical patients in Pakistan has crossed 2,000. Pakistan has now shut its schools till January 10 and postponed exams to try to curb new coronavirus infections and a rise in the number of people in hospital with COVID-19. Pakistan's COVID-19 tally rose to 389,311 on Friday after 3,130 new cases were detected in the past 24 hours across the country. Sindh province has the highest positivity ratio of 13.25% and Punjab has the lowest positivity ratio of 3.59%. Amid growing fear about the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic in the country, Schools, universities and colleges across Pakistan on Thursday shut down until January. The institutions are expected to reopen on January 11, following winter vacation, although the government will re-evaluate the situation in the first week of January. The decision to close schools, officials have said, was based on an increase in the rate of positive test results in the country. The South Asian country has ruled out a wide-ranging lockdown, opting to close down non-essential public gatherings in a bid to keep the economy afloat through the pandemic. Moving on. 
Several people were severely injured this week after police and Pakistan administered Kashmir Betan charged upon them for holding protests against rising human rights violations in the illegally occupied region. The protesters were raising their voices against illegal abductions of activists and common people by Pakistani forces to muzzle dissent. Pakistan's brutalities towards the people in Pakistan-administered Kashmir intensified after the police in Rawalkot attacked demonstrators protesting against human rights violations in the illegally occupied region this week. The protesters were reportedly demonstrating peacefully against Islamabad for various human rights violations, including illegal abductions of activists and common people to muzzle dissent. The police were seen brutally beating the demonstrators with sticks, inflicting severe blows and seriously injuring several of them. Last month, residents in Ravalakot city grabbed Pakistani secret agents who were trying to abduct a Kashmiri youth identify as Noman. In a video posted by UKPNP United Kashmir People's National Party, a large number of people were seen smashing a vehicle in which the abductors were travelling. The abductors identify themselves as members of the FIA Federal Investigating Agency, but the residents claim that they were carrying fake identity cards. In news from Afghanistan, the European Union in Kabul has called for the swift establishment and operationalization of the High Council for National Reconciliation in Afghanistan. This comes amid lack of operational progress around the High Council has drawn sharp criticism in the past few weeks, especially as no progress has been made about formalizing the peace body. The European Union or EU delegation in Kabul has called for the swift establishment and operationalization of the High Council of National Reconciliation in Afghanistan, a body designated to provide guidance to the peace negotiations with the Taliban. EU issuing a statement on Twitter on Thursday further said, in addition to political leaders, the membership of the council should include a diverse membership representing women's group, war victims, religious minorities, youth and civil society organizations. This comes as lack of operational progress around the High Council has drawn sharp criticism in the past few weeks, especially no progress has been made about formalizing the peace body. Although Abdullah Abdullah is the head of the Council, President Ashraf Ghani appointed 46 members to the body in August, a move that was objected by many politicians whose names were not on the list. Spokesmen of the High Council earlier this week had said, that efforts are underway to complete the formation of the council. The Australian Army informed on Friday that 13 soldiers of its special forces have been told that they face dismissal over alleged unlawful killings in Afghanistan. This comes a week after an independent report revealed that 39 unarmed Afghan prisoners and civilians were killed by 19 Australian soldiers. Australia has told 13 Special Forces soldiers they face dismissal in relation to a report on alleged unlawful killings in Afghanistan, the head of the country's army said on Friday. An independent report published last week in a redacted form said there was evidence that 39 unarmed Afghan prisoners and civilians were killed by 19 Australian soldiers. Under mounting pressure, Lieutenant General Rick Burt, the head of the Australian Army, said 13 current soldiers have been issued with notices that could eventually lead to their termination and they have two weeks to respond. We are all holding ourselves to account as an organisation and we will work through this in a proper way. That's why we ask for the report. Lieutenant General Burt did not identify any of the 13 soldiers but said they were not part of the 19 current and former soldiers who face possible criminal charges. Australia's most senior military official apologised to Afghanistan last week after the release of the report. In news from Nepal, the Nepal and India relationship is intricate and exists in various paradigms, said Indian Foreign Secretary Harsh Vardhan Shringla on Friday, adding that Kathmandu is fundamental to India's neighbourhood first approach. 
Shringla made the remarks during an address in Kathmandu on Friday as part of his two-day visit to the Himalayan nation. Shringla also overviewed development projects, including schools being built in Nepal with Indian assistance. The Indian official upon arrival on Thursday met Nepali leadership including President Vidya Devi Bhandari, Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli and Foreign Minister Pradeep Kumar Gyavali. Shringla also extended invitation to Gyavali to visit New Delhi next month for a ministerial level bilateral meeting. Nepal is fundamental to our neighborhood first approach. India's development and modernization are incomplete and intrinsically and symbiotically linked to the development and modernization of neighboring countries such as Nepal. Moving on, 28-year-old Nisha Rao has become the first transgender lawyer of Pakistan and her story is very inspiring. From begging on roads to becoming a lawyer, she has achieved a rather huge milestone in the face of utter and blatant discrimination. Twenty-eight-year-old Nisha Rao is not just another lawyer in Pakistan. She is the first transgender lawyer in this South Asian Islamic Republic and she also wants to do her master's in law. She wants to become Pakistan's first transgender judge. When she arrived in Karachi, Pakistan's largest city, elder transgenders with whom she sought refuge advised her either to beg or become a sex worker in order to survive in the unforgiving port city of 20 million. Rao did beg standing at busy traffic signals going from car to car and used the money she made for law classes she was taking in the evening. After years of effort, she earned her law degree and earlier this year, got her license to practice and has become a member of the Karachi Bar Association, a professional lawyer's body. When I was able to get the education of the law, I had to face a lot of problems. I had to pay for books and books. So I had to ask all the signal on the signal. I had to take a class in the evening. That's why I had to get the education of the law. And my goal, my wishes, my dream is कि मैं पाकिस्तान की हिस्ट्री में पहली ख्वाजा सरा जज लगूं। ना सिर्फ मतलब हम वकीलों के लिए ये फखर की बात है और ये ट्रांसजेंडर्स जो हैं उनके लिए भी फखर की बात है कि पाकिस्तान में एक ट्रांसजेंडर ने खुद को मनवाया है और हमारे लिए और स्पेशली जो कराची बार है उसके लिए ये फखर की बात है कि जो पहले पहली ख्वाजा सरा जो वकील हुई हैं वो कराची बार से जो है मुंसलिक है आफ्टर ईयर्स ऑफ ब्रूटल प्रोसिक्यूशन पाकिस्तानी ट्रांसजेंडर्स गेन रिकोगशन इन टू when the Supreme Court granted them special status with rights equal to other citizens. And it wasn't until 2018 that Pakistan's parliament passed its first law recognizing transgender people as equal citizens and legislated penalties for discrimination and violence against them. On the ground, however, little progress has been made. As the world grapples with the death of legendary footballer Diego Maradona, Fans in parts of India also remembered and paid tribute to legend on Thursday. The Argentine player, who was regarded as one of the greatest soccer players of all times, died on Wednesday after suffering a heart attack at the age of 60. Indian soccer fans remembered and paid tribute to Argentine soccer legend Diego Maradona on Thursday as one of the greatest soccer players of all time died on Wednesday at his home in Argentina after suffering a heart attack. In India's Kolkata, Imphal and Siliguri cities, fans offered silent tribute to the 60-year-old legend and also showered his statue with flowers. Beloved across the world, leading Argentina to World Cup glory in 1986 and adored in Italy for taking Napoli to two Series A titles, Maradona was a uniquely gifted player who rose from the tough streets of Buenos Aires to reach the pinnacle of his sport. Before I understood football, I understood Maradona because the magnitude he had was something unparalleled and growing up Listening to stories from my from my father uh, or people who have seen him play, you could visualize who Maradona is because you don't need to know the man personally. Meanwhile, world-renowned Indian sand artist Sudarshan Patnaik created a sand sculpture of Maradona at a beach in Puri, 
close to the eastern city of Bhubaneswar. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.